All right, good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. We had to get these pictures down here for you guys. Um, I'm Lauren Childress. I'm a deputy with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and the office's public information officer. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming out here this morning um, to hear of this exciting news and information that the sheriff's going to share with you this morning. Uh, this is in regards to the identification of our Jane Doe case from 1993, and the sheriff will uh, talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Um, I've already provided all of your news desks with the records request form. These pictures will be available to you uh, digitally if you send that records request form back to the email address that we provided. Um, the sheriff's name, uh, Tony Spurlock, the spelling is T-O-N-Y and last name Spurlock, S-P-U-R-L-O-C-K. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to him. If you have any questions, he'll be taking those towards the end. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you all for, for being here. This is a, um, a great day for this case. And I wanna tell you just a little bit about it and then some information uh, about the young lady that we were able to identify. June 15, 1993, uh, the body of, uh, of a young woman was found in the Rainbow Creek Falls area of Douglas County, the very far southwest portion of Douglas County and the corners of Albert or El Paso and Teller counties. Uh, the investigation uh, went as most, most investigations do. Uh, we had a, a pretty extensive crime scene, uh, but quickly we were uh, faced with the fact that we had the inability to identify the deceased person. This investigation continued on and then went cold. Uh, over the years, uh, the investigation was um, uh, sparked by new technology, uh, new pieces of information, and as we continued to gather information, uh, working very closely with the coroner's office here in Douglas County, in 2020, uh, the cold case uh, team that uh, my office put together a cold case review team and cold case unit specifically looking at the cold cases in Douglas County uh, reopened uh, this case which was known as Jane Doe and we started to work it. One of the specific things we did is we partnered right away with United Data Connect and Crime Stoppers to give us the resources and the technology to help us with uh, the DNA genealogy. And Detective uh, Shannon Jensen was assigned to uh, focus on that particular area of this investigation. Um, it was just recent that we were able to identify uh, this person and I'm very happy to say being the sheriff here at the time when this investigation, or being a deputy at the time when this investigation was going on and now the sheriff, it's, it's uh, an honor to be able to say her name out loud to the public and to give her name um, some credibility and hopefully folks can assist us in, in the investigation. Um, so today we have identified uh, Rebecca Ann Redeker, who was known by her family as Becky, who lived in the Colorado Springs area uh, during uh, the, the early uh, 90s. Uh, she also lived and went to high school in Manitou Springs from 85 to 88 and went to Coronado High School in Colorado Springs in 1989. She also spent uh, about a year at Manuel High School, all of these in, in Colorado Springs area. In June of 1993, as I said before, uh, unfortunately, uh, Becky's body was found in the forest of Douglas County. Uh, we started the investigation and where we're at today is asking for anyone who knew Becky, who recognizes any of these photographs of her, um, anyone that she was with in the summer of 1993, anyone that she might have talked to, anyone that she was associated with, or anyone who saw her, if they could contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and we'll have that number for uh, the detective that is involved in the case, share that information with them. We really need that. We have been in contact with her family. 
She is survived by her mother and brother, and they are cooperating in this investigation and providing us information. You can imagine how difficult it is for them to have not known where their daughter was because we weren't able to identify her. And again, I want to thank United Data Connect and their staff for reaching out to us and, and being a part of this partnership that helped us with this genealogy track, which we later was able to positively identify the DNA of, of uh, Becky uh, to um, known DNA to, to identify her. And of course, we couldn't have done that uh, without Crime Stoppers assisting us uh, uh, financially in putting that together. I, I want to give an opportunity for Under Sheriff Holly Nicholson Cluth, who was assigned to this case originally in 1993, to say a few words and then we'll open it up for some questions. Under Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning. As a new detective in 1993, I had no idea that this case would haunt me for 27 years. Um, over the years, many, many people were involved in reconstructions of what she may have looked like, of uh, the crime scene, of evidence, examinations, working with a variety of agencies to try to uh, examine what we had left of Rebecca. And I just have to say that uh, I'm just so thankful that this part has been solved, that over all of this time, there's now a family that we know this girl belonged to. And she is someone, she's no longer our Jane Doe. So thank God for that. It really is the commitment of Sheriff Spurlock's to um, cold case investigations and committing personnel and resources to that that helped solve this case. And uh, obviously there's a lot more work to be done, but um, I'm confident that we'll find out more and with the public's help be able to find out how she got there and uh, what happened to her and especially for the family, for the closure for the family. So, thank you. I wanted to just uh, finally say uh, just two things quickly and open up for questions. Um, uh, Coroner Jill Roman, who's right, uh, right behind me, um, her office is tasked and has the responsibility for uh, identifying uh, uh, persons. And uh, she did assist us and, and was helpful, so thank you, Jill. Uh, for your for your assistance and and uh, getting the identification and helping us notify uh, uh, Becky's next of kin. So I'm available for a few questions. Keeping in mind this is an ongoing investigation, so some of the particulars we won't be able to uh, answer. Yes. Sir. Thank you very much. We were just told by uh, Metro Denver Crime Stoppers that they will up the reward for any information that leads to uh, the arrest of uh, the persons involved in uh, killing Becky up to $10,000. So thank you very much, and we really appreciate that partnership again. Thank you. Sir, can you fill yes. in the blank? I don't know if I'm missing something, but case in 1993, wasn't there a family that continued to let authorities know that there was a, a young girl missing? So, yes, there was, and uh, we have been in contact with the family. The unfortunate part about it is, is that we had no idea who she was. Um, we had uh, no ability to match her to anyone, and there are um, hundreds of thousands of missing persons in the United States. Unfortunately, um, the way that um, uh, Becky was found, uh, we were unable to uh, do a facial uh, photograph. We were unable to share that. There was some work done where there was some uh, facial reconstruction. We did do a number of press releases over the years with that to show it and say, hey, does anybody recognize this person? But again, we were using technology that um, was, of course, um, working in the dark. And so unfortunately, it wasn't until we were able to do the genealogy tie where we were able to connect all of the dots and we were able to uh, locate her family. Do we know how long uh, Becky's remains had been in the forest before anyone had found her? I believe the investigation uh, led us to believe that she was there no more than 72 hours uh, before she was uh, found. Can you say how she died? 
Uh, right now, the uh, it's undetermined for cause of death, um, and that is still at the hands of the coroner. Um, we again been working with them, um, and as we find more information, that might fill in some of those gaps as well. You know, I think uh, I had the opportunity to be on the phone, on a Zoom phone call with them. And I think the, I don't know if I would call it relief. I would call it a um, reigniting of, of sadness because they had um, missed their family member for all of those years and had no idea what had happened to her. They had conjured up all kinds of thoughts that could have where she was at who she was um, until um, you know we had to make that that difficult phone call to say we have positively identified the remains of a body that we now know for sure is your daughter Becky and from that point it was obviously very traumatic for them but again they've been very cooperative for us and helped us fill in a lot of information that we didn't have and and as I told the detectives when they came up and said we've identified her we know who she is, uh, brought the detectives together and said, okay, this is a homicide that just occurred and that's how we're handling it. This is an active working homicide case that the detectives and the staff from my office and other agencies that are assisting us, uh, we're working this as if it just occurred. Did her family stay in Colorado or did they No, her family moved away and um, you know, that, that was a difficult issue too about trying to identify who the person was um, when the family had, had moved away. Are there any persons of interest at this time? Uh, right now we have no persons of interest because this is an investigation really that just started the second that we were able to identify Becky. And uh, we, we, we are again asking everyone and particularly anyone who lived in the Colorado Springs area, Manitou Springs, old Colorado City, if you lived in that area, you went to school with, you knew, uh, as again, knew her as Becky, um, if you knew her or you knew who she hung out with, I'd ask you to, to contact uh, the lead detective on this case is Detective O'Harold, and his number is 303-784-7815. Repeating, Detective Harold, 303-784-7815 and he would appreciate any information that the public has, no matter how small it is, you knew her in class, we would like to fill in the blanks from uh, her life that we really just don't have available to us. Are you working with any of the agencies down in the Colorado area? So we have been in contact with both the Tyler County Sheriff, El Paso, and the city of Colorado Springs. Those are the areas where she would have been in and around. And so we are working with them to um, see if there's any information or intelligence information that we might be able to, to glean from it. Sure, if your office has had pretty good success within the last 12 months with cold cases, you've reiterated a couple of times over the last year that there's a message to there is someone, a murderer, maybe in custody right now, nobody knows at this point, but your message again that you're not gonna stop no matter how many years later. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the message of this office is, is when I came in and created the cold case team and, and we created a cold case review team, the second we did that, the commitment was we were going to work the cold cases that were assigned to us that were a part of who we are in Douglas County, uh, murdered victims, and in this case, a Jane Doe. And the mission was we would not stop until we identify them. We had luck in one where we had a conviction just recently. And this one, as the undersheriff said, well, was very sad because we, we can't even work a homicide case. We can't work anything until we know who this person is. And when um, Detective Jensen was able to break that seal with the, with the help of United Data Connect and really put a name to it, now we can start working it. And, and that's how we got these photographs. We had no idea. And those are the photographs that we were able to receive through family members and, and other sources that will help us help you folks, the citizens, uh, particularly those of you down in the Colorado Springs, El Paso and Teller County area, that if you ever saw Becky, had a contact with her or knew her, again, that will help our detectives um, do what we really need to do and that's help uh, fill those uh, blank spots and find out who uh, murdered Becky.
So a couple questions. Yes, that was obviously part of the help and the work with the coroner's office. Uh, we did um, have her body exhumed, and uh, some of the infer some of the the uh, evidence from that um, uh, investigation did assist us in getting appropriate DNA so we could um, uh, connect it to uh, the genealogy tree and identifier. Now, at this point right now, we have, again, to your question, how does the family feel? Uh, we are working with the family and what is in the best interest. Obviously, everything is now still. Becky is a piece of our evidence, something that we covet and we hang on to. Um, and when uh, it is appropriate and uh, uh, timely for us, then uh, we will be working with the family to make sure um, the remains are either returned to uh, her, um, her grave site that was here in Castle Rock, um, or we'll be working closely with the family with that. So there is a lot of evidence that we are now obviously going through because in 1993, uh, the evidence that we had available to us and the technology is completely different than where we're at today. So all of that, we have a section that is specifically working on all of that. So I, I can't say that there was new evidence or anything else until we painstakingly go through every piece of evidence. Uh, and then hopefully there could be something there that can connect us to a suspect. Anything else? Again, thank you all very much. Uh, I cannot stress enough that if you uh, knew anyone or you knew Becky or you had anything uh, connected uh, in Becky's life, please call our office and help us uh, identify the suspect or suspects that were responsible for her death and leaving her body in the National Forest. Uh, without a name for all these years. And again, I want to thank United Data Connect and uh, especially thank Denver Metro Crime Stoppers for raising that um, uh, reward. So if uh, you have any of that information, please come forward. And if it's assistance and it helps us, we'll definitely connect you to uh, that reward. So please help us um, help the family and then now help us identify the person who caused this. Thank you very much. Thank you.